Hello everybody, this is Steve with Upgradia. Thanks for joining me today. Today I'm going to demonstrate how to troubleshoot an Antminer S17 or S17 Pro hash board by performing live voltage checks. Right, to perform these checks, I'm going to be using the Zeus Universal Test Fixture and a Fluke Multimeter. First, let's take a brief look at the board's main power circuit. All right, starting in the upper right corner, we have terminals J6 and J7 which connect directly to the main power supply. J7, being the positive terminal, is located nearest the corner. And during the test, a DC voltage around 20 volts is applied for a short period of time. Okay, please note that the 20 volts is only for the test and does not reflect what the board normally operates on, which is more around 18.5 for the stock. All right, as you can see, voltage is immediately blocked by the four MOSFETs on, on the top. And before it can pass, the PIC must first enable all four of those MOSFETs. And at that point, you have current flow, which can flow across the board along the left side before it gets distributed to the four rows where the chips are. And going from left to right, each chip drops approximately 1.55 volts and subsequently leaving you with approximately 1.5 volts near the end in between voltage domains 1 and 2. Now the board is broken up into 12 voltage domains. These domains run vertical with the board and are responsible for regulating the 0.8 and 1.8 volts associated with the signals which we're going to be testing. Now the generation of these voltages is a little bit more on the advanced side and I'm not going to be covering that in this video. However, the voltage domains are key for referencing the flow direction of the signal and identifying the test points. With that being said, starting from the right, you're going to have domain number one, which is common with the odd domains. And next, you're going to have domain two, which is common with the other even domains. Okay, so let's talk about the signals. In the forward direction, meaning starting from chip one, going to 48, you have four signals. BO, reset, CO, and the clock signal. If any of these signals are lost, you'll still be able to hash, however, it will be at a reduced hash rate since everything following the break in the circuit will not work. So if your firmware or test fixture tells you that you have a reduced number of ASICs that is greater than zero, it means that you have a break in one of these signals. Now the fifth signal, and my least favorite, is the RO signal. This is a 1.8 volt signal that flows in the reverse direction from chip 48 to chip number one. Why is this my least favorite? Well, because any break in the RO signal results in zero ASICs found, rendering the entire board useless. When I troubleshoot a zero ASICs board, I repair the RO signal first and then go from there. When performing the test, you should expect to see these voltages at the associated test points. And if you haven't already, write it down and or memorize it so there's no need to repeatedly reference it as you're performing these numerous readings. Your forward signals are as follows. You got BO, which is 0 .001 volts. Your reset, 1.8 volts. CO, 1.8 volts. And your clock, 0 0.8 volts. And the only reverse signal, RO, which is 1.8 volts. Now remember, all these are DC voltages, and they are merely an approximation of what you're truly going to see when you take your measurements. The first test I perform is immediately following chip 48. Here I measure each signal so I know exactly what I'm dealing with. If the signal equals the value from the chart, then you know the signal is good all the way through. And for RO, if you have a number of ASICs found that is greater than zero, you know that the RO signal is good. And if you're dealing with a zero ASICs board, be sure to check the RO signal first to verify you're at least starting with a good 1.8 volts on your circuit and therefore you're not chasing it around the rest of the board. All right, enough of the discussion. Let's get this test started. So here we're starting off with the BO signal, 0 0.001 volts. Next, we move on to the reset. And here you have 1.823 volts, rounding down to 1.8. And next, we're going to have the RO signal. And I'm going to pause for a moment here. So if you look at the drawing, you see that I have listed there as the RI. Now, with respect to this chip, RI, the I stands for the inlet. So with this test point, the signal is going into chip 48. 
and the BO and CO, the O stands for the outlet. So like I said, the test points here for these are on the outlet of chip 48. On the other side of that chip, it would be BI and CI as well as RO. Now this applies to just basically signifying the flow path with respect to that chip and it applies to all the signals. So I hope this clears things up for you guys. All right, moving on, here we are with the test in the RO signal. 1.768 volts. And we're going to move on to CO. And here we have 1.823 volts. And last but not least, we have the clock signal. Sorry, you can't see my pin. 0.842 volts. This next test is going to be at the bottom of the board between chips 20 and 21. I chose this since it's typically your second spot that you're going to be checking if you're trying to split the board to determine which half of the board contains the issue. Okay, here we are at the bottom of the board, starting with the BO signal. You can follow along with the diagram on your right, and you can expect 0 0.001 volts at this point. Remember, this is the output of chip number 20, so the reset out, 1.8 volts. And coming up for this RO signal right here, you'll notice that I switched the heat sinks. So you want to go to heat sink number 21. Otherwise, you'll be, you can expect a reading of about 3 volts or somewhere in that neighborhood if you go to heat sink number 20. So here we're checking the CO signal. Switch your heat sink back to 20. 1.8 volts. And last but not least, you're going to check the clock output of number 20 and you can expect 0 0.8 volts here. And next we're going to go in between the heat sinks. And the most important thing to note here is that the flow path matters. In the odd numbered domains, the flow is down versus the even numbered domains where the flow is up. And your test points are different for each, so you need to identify the direction of the signals flowing before diving into the test. And please note, the flow of the RO signal is opposite from that I just described. I would also like to use this photo to point out that the signal does not go directly through the chip. By that I mean if the signal enters the chip at the fourth pin from the left, it's wrong to assume it exits the other side at the fourth pin from the left. Okay, moving on, we're going to go to test points in between A6, 19 and 20, where the forward signal runs from top to bottom. And here we start with the clock, 0 0.8 volts. And we got the CO signal, 1.8 RO. Switch the heat sinks, 1.8 the bottom of that resistor is the reset, and then we have the BO signal. All right, now we'll move over to the other side, and here we start with the BO signal. You got the bottom of that resistor is the reset, and switch the heat sinks, test the RO. We have the CO, and finally we have the clock signal. And our last test we're going to perform is at the top of the board where the domain switches at chips 32 and 33. And here we're going to start at the bottom left with the BO signal. Moving up, got the reset. Switch your heat sinks and you got the RI or RO. Here you have the CO, 1.8 volts. And finally you got the clock signal of 0 0.8 volts. All right, once again, I'm Steve with Upgradia, and thanks a lot for hanging around. I hope this video presented you with some helpful information. If so, please like and subscribe, and also feel free to leave me a comment if you have any suggestions and or questions, and I'll do my best to get back to you. Thanks for watching.